in the name of Jesus. Look upon their family members, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give them, Lord God, of hosts, Lord. The opportunity, Lord Jesus, wisdom and knowledge, Lord, to go and check on their family members, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, of hosts, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for your presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing and your grace and your mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, we ask you, Lord, look upon each and every sanctuary throughout the nations, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, we ask you, Lord, look upon the apostles, the prophets, Lord, missionaries, male and females, Lord Jesus. Look upon the pastors, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the assistants, Lord, Lord, in your name, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to have your way, Lord Jesus. Rain down your latter rain, Lord, upon your peoples everywhere, Lord. In the name of Jesus, rain down your Holy Ghost, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to look upon, Lord Jesus, those that are in the trailers outside, Lord. In the name of Jesus, their minds, their hearts, and their souls, Lord. In the name of Jesus, like God of hosts, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to look upon each and every sanctuary, Lord. In California, Lord Jesus, not just here, Lord Jesus, but throughout the United States, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look upon their pastors, Lord Jesus. Like God of hosts, their disciples, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Like God of hosts, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, for all things, Lord Jesus, through you and by you, Lord. All things is possible, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Like God of hosts, Lord, we ask you, Lord, take charge of this service, Lord Jesus, and have your way and let your will be done, Lord. Not mine, not theirs, Lord, but your will be done according to your will. Your way, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. Our Lord, to speak as a teacher for today, Lord. These blessings and others we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.
dancing up and down, running all around, having everlasting life.
your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. You've gone to prepare a place for us. Thank you, Jesus.
when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Most likely the Hebrew blessing over the bread, the Hamotzi, would have been said. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Hamotzi lechem in ha'aretz. Let's say the English together. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Thus he was prophesying of his own resurrection because he is the bread of life. Amen? Let's partake of the Lord's body. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. Say, New covenant. New covenant. New covenant. New covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in memory of me. You know, they had a, a sign and a shadow, a promise of this, even when they crossed over the River Jordan to go into the Promised Land, because the river rolled all the way back. Where did it roll back to, Pastor Dick? It rolled all the way back to... Come on, come on. Okay, I'm going to let you look it up. It's very exciting. When you look at the name of the place, the river rolled back to, <laughs> you're going to be excited. And if you're not, I'm going to ask you why you should be not to anybody. It was a cut promise that God was going to make all things new. He's going to bring it right back to the same way it was at the beginning of the original plan for man. He was going to be able to be our Father, and we were able to come in with Him, just like He did in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Amen. He would have said, Baruch Ata Adonai Eleni Malach HaOlam Bereh Bereh HaGafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Who are the fruit of the vine? We are. We are. We are created by the blood of Jesus because our sins were forgiven and we're able to grow and live. Amen. Let's partake of the Lord's blood together.
the other teams finish. Also, I have a couple of announcements. Um, Saturday is breakfast. Is that at the same place, Marcy? It's the same place. Is it uh, I thought the Waffle Place? Yeah, it's the third Saturday. It's the second Saturday. Okay, you got the second Saturday. Thank you. I hope so. That's what it was last month. I just brought it forward. So that's this coming Saturday is breakfast. Okay. All right. On the eighth. All right. Be prepared to fellowship, amen. Amen. Okay. Also in March we're going um, we're going to have Purim, so look forward to that. Amen. We're going to have a couple things coming up in March, so um, we'll find out more about that in the following weeks. On the back of your bulletin, um, I've added Sheena to this prayer list. Those of you that know Sheena, she um, used to be here. She was a youth pastor for a while, and she's contracted MRSA. So keep her in prayer, amen? As well as everybody else on these lists. Studies are the same this week, Wednesday with Jim, Thursday with Pastor Larry, Saturday with uh, Cassie and Paul, if you're interested in coming to that. I usually start around 3, but you have to contact them to make sure. So, if you need those, if you're interested, you want their number, we can get that for you. Uh, but we're good for Thursday, right, Pastor Larry? Yeah. And, um, as far as I know, we're good for Wednesday. I believe Jim will be in town. So, good. And, okay. So, the offering. Do I have two children that want to help me? Wait, wait, wait okay, hold on. Wait, sit down. Marcy, will you come up, please? Uh, stay here, Doug. Huh? We have a special birthday tomorrow. <laughs> And it's our uh, uh, Pastor Dan's birthday is tomorrow, and we want yeah. to just surprise her a little bit. <laughs> so, I'm going to honor her for all of the work she does around here. Thank you. No matter how much we love her. And so, we're going to bring the money to it. So, we will just give you that and sing happy birthday. So, everybody, sing with me, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you find Jesus near. A happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Have the best. got two people here each one of them is represented by a glass of skittles skittles one and skittles two this morning god has presented to us that two different people in the way we live today the first guy lives trying to just take care of himself and you realize the needs are great so he gives some of his skittles to his mortgage payment and he gives some of his skittles to his car payment and if he has kids more cars then he has kids that will one day go to college and he has to give more money for college and it's college so it's and it's college so it's more skittles trying to take care of himself one day though one of those kids decide they want to get married and it's their daughter i know what he feels like and that's the whole thing and then he looks down and he says well 
I don't have any left over to give to God. But God says there's this other guy. His skittles, the first thing he does with them, he hears the truth. He's connected to what Christ has done in him, and he takes his skittles and he gives them to God. His storehouse to those in need, the tithe. He gives them to him. And then he sees the need and he gives somebody else. Then he realizes he has a mortgage payment. He has realized he has cars to pay for. He realizes that he has college to pay for. He realizes that he has a wedding to pay for. But then he realizes his is empty. He's not sure what to do and he knows he's obeyed God and then he looks to God. And God begins to pour out his storehouse upon him. And God says, it's okay, I got room enough for you. Listen, my friend, his bucket is never empty. It's never empty. And my friend, I want you to understand the issue of the hour is, which guy will we be? What will you do with your Skittles? Because the truth is, God overwhelmingly, God overwhelmingly, in the truth of his word has said, out of the overflow, that love will pour out of you and you will be generous. Under my feet, he's under my feet, he's under my feet. 
That's Shalak. When he sent, this is the week of February 2nd, 2020, to February 8th, 2020. From the Torah, Exodus 13, 17, to Exodus 17, 16. The prophets, Judges 4, 4, to Judges 5, 31. And the Gospel from Matthew 14, 22 to 33. A people ransomed by God. You know what ransomed means? It means he paid for it. See? He paid the price. Amen. There was an old song that said, I owed a debt I could not pay, and he paid the debt that I could not pay. He paid the debt that I could not pay. Amen. Praise God. He didn't know it because he lived a perfect life. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, we're looking for spiritual deliverance. The last day of Passover commemorates the crossing of the Red Sea, the final deliverance from bondage, and the miracle of immersion. Paul wrote to the believers at Corinth, for I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and passed through the sea, and all were immersed into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 2. All right. In Paul's day, one who wanted to become a disciple of Yeshua had to go through a ritual immersion. This rule applied to both Jews and Gentiles. Prior to the immersion, the new disciple confessed and renounced his sins in keeping with the tradition of John's immersion or baptism. Then he descended into a gathering of living water for the name of Yeshua. The immersion brought ceremonial cleansing from Levitical impurity and it symbolized spiritual cleansing, death and resurrection. In other words, when we get baptized, we're symbolizing in the water that we are dying out to ourselves and we're going to rise up again to live in Christ. Well, the Lord Judaism Jesus. teaches well, that one who immerses in a mikvah, immersion pool, symbolically dies as he descends into the water and is reborn as he leaves the water. The apostles applied the death and rebirth imagery to the immersion ritual. <laughs> Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in the Messiah, Yeshua, have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. If we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans 6, 3 through 5. For the apostles, immersion into the name of Messiah represented the transition from death to life, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Right, the Bible says, is marvelous light. <laughs> Praise God. By way of ad 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 I'm going to get this out. <laughs> By way of analogy, ad analogy, there we go. Paul saw the same imagery at work in the crossing of the sea. The children of Israel left Egypt, Pharaoh, and slavery behind as they descended into the water, and they arose on the other side as free men, a people ransomed by God. Paul warned the Corinthians not to think too highly of themselves. Paul warned them that the generation that perished in the wilderness had similar credentials to their own. They had all been immersed into Moses in the cloud and the sea, yet they did not enter the promised land, which is compared to the Messianic era. Paul was not the only Torah teacher to compare the crossing of the Red Sea to the water of the mikvah in the Midrash Rabbah. The nation of Israel passes through the Red Sea to purify themselves in preparation for their journey to Mount Sinai. All right. 
the crossing of the sea can be compared to a woman who, having completed the days of uncleanliness, purifies herself and came to her husband. When he saw her, he asked, Who can testify that you are clean? And she re replied, Behold, my maid can testify that I have purified myself by immersion in the mikvah. Exodus, Rabbi 23, 12. So, when, when we come to the Lord, we should come to him with a pure heart and a clean heart and with a desire to live as Christ lived. And that's what our immersion represents, death in the world and life in Christ. Amen.
Can you imagine the God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, yes, Lord. appearing to you and telling you that he has loved you with an everlasting love? Amen. Praise God. Everlasting love, everlasting life, everlasting covenant. Yep. He's an everlasting God, and his love for you is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Let's go now to John 3.16. Pastor Larry taught this scripture in last week's message, and most of you are very familiar with it. And I forgot to tell you, I like 17 and 18 to Kevin, but we can say it from memory if you don't have it there. But let's say 16, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. What did he do? He went. Loved the world. So God did what Pastor Fonda? He loved the world. Yes, yeah. And he Pastor Fonda's excited about the gift. He's she's excited about the gift. He so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him. And I remember a message Pastor Larry taught, and I've I taught it over and over and over since I heard it years ago. That word that believes is not just a but not just believes he exists. Acknowledges his existence. No, 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 no. It's a believes in what he's teaching. Believes the teaching enough to do our best to follow the teaching. Believes enough in the teaching to know that if we follow the teaching, that we should have everlasting life instead of perishing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send him. Now, this is important. Especially church people everywhere. Listen to this part. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be what? Saved. Saved. So God loved us so much that he gave the most precious thing that he could think of to us because it's the Jesus is the only one that was worthy to give himself as a sacrifice for us. And he gave it, he loved us so much he sent his own son to be a human and to live among us and to die at pay the price for our sins. Amen. God. Reconciling us back to God. That he loved us so much, he sent his son not to be a witness against us, not to judge us, not to condemn us. He could have. He's a righteous God. He could have sent his son to condemn us and then tell us everything we were doing wrong. But no, what did Jesus do? God on the cross. He loved us so much that he laid down his very own life Amen. Amen. and paid the price for everything we were doing wrong. Amen. Amen. After he showed us and he taught us everything we should do right. Amen. Woo! Think about that. He came in meekness and humbleness Amen. and humility and in pure love because Jesus said. If you see me, you see the Father. And the Father is love, and the Father sent Jesus in love, and Jesus was love dwelling among us, incarnate, just a ball of love, and he loved us so much, he didn't accuse, he didn't rant, or he got angry, I know he got angry and unrighteousness, but he loved the individuals. But he taught us what was right, he showed us what was wrong. He set the record straight. A lot of the interpretation of the, the scripture and of the Torah, of the instructions of the law, we call it, had been misinterpreted by man. And he kind of made fun of it. The very first miracle that he performed, he turned the water into wine. Amen. How did he do it, though? Hallelujah. He told them to go get what clay jars and put water in them. And then he turned that water into wine and then they served the best, and it was the best wine that they had at the feast, the marriage. But what we miss as Christians, 
most of the Jewish people even today don't miss because they know in the Mishnah, the, the teachings of the rabbis, at Jesus' time it was being taught that putting anything besides water in a jar in a clay pot was sin. You didn't put wine in a clay jar because that would be sin. And I can tell you why. And Jesus came in in a very, I would I like to think he's kind of, it was kind of common. He said, I'm God. Hallelujah. I turned the water into the wine in the clay pot. Tell me it's wrong. Really? You guys, in another place, Jesus told people, he told the, the Pharisees that they strain a gnat and swallow a camel. All right, no. They strain, they, in other words, oh, you people, how could you get this so messed up? All right, no. Let me, let me, let me tell you how it's really supposed to go. You're, have you ever heard the expression, you're majoring on the minors? Mm -hmm. All right. You're focusing on the wrong things. You ever heard in the 50s, in the 60s, maybe even today, you hear the term clothesline preaching? My father, when he was on the evangelistic field, he went to a church that had a wall right down the middle of it, about the size of this church. Had a wall right down the middle of it, two different doors. One said buttons. The other one said hook and eye. Yeah. And he said, what's this? And they said, well, some of us thought it was so unholy that those flashy buttons came out for the women to be wearing buttons to the church and the men too. And so we knew they should be wearing the hook and eye that's modest. And God would honor modesty. And they would pull up a scripture. The other group said, God wants us to look good where his bride is set to adorn us. So we should wear the buttons with pride and joy, our very best for the Lord. And they had so much dissension. This is a true story. They had so much dissension over whether the women and the men should wear buttons or hook and eyes. That they divided uh, their church because they were poor and they couldn't build a new one. They built a wall down the middle of it and had two separate churches going on because of that. All right, no. I can hear my dad just like uh, President uh, Ronald Reagan, but this uh, was left before that time. I could hear him saying, tear down that wall! All right, no. Can you hear that saying, tear down that wall! <laughs> this is nonsense! That's what he My dad was a hillbilly. He was an anointed hillbilly, though. You know what was great about my dad and my book? And what was great about my dad and so many people's book in this community, even, is that he loved people. Right. He really, I could say, behind closed doors in our home, we were not a perfect family. I was not a perfect son. I was far from it. But I can tell you, my dad, he was the real deal when it came to loving people and ministry work. He loved people. And he, and, and he was not a hypocrite. He practiced what he preached to the best of his ability. And when he blew it, I saw him cry many times and apologize to the whole family because he felt he had made some type of mistake. He was a man that loved greatly. He loved deeply. And that's the mark of a true Christian. The word says we will be known by our what? will be known by our love. Amen. Love. Amen. We must not fall into the trap of forgetting to love. Oh, Jesus. What does it mean? What does love really mean? Oh, the one who believes in him, in Jesus, is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has been condemned already. Because he has not put his trust in the name of the one and only Son of the Most High God. Amen. 
that's been son, son of Elohim is the word for God. It's a, the plural word for three or more in the Hebrew. Mm, it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Really. You know, I was waiting to make sure I was right. You see, he didn't come down here to see what we were doing wrong, point it out, and get on to us about it and punish us and hit us over the head with a two before or, or, or to whip us with a switch. No, he came down to get whipped with a cat of nine towels to bear the stripes for our transgressions, Amen. to have his skin and his body so torn up or bruised up. The kids say, Torah from the floor. <coughs> then the, the scripture says he is hardly recognizable as a man. And, and my mother, I remember uh, preaching a message one, uh, one resurrection season about what the human body, what Yeshua, what Jesus actually suffered physically when he died on that. rabbi yesterday talking about the meaning that he took. And uh, the way they did it was with that cat of nine counts with the, the pieces of shrapnel, like metal, or bones tied into the leather. And they actually took so many on the left side, and so many on the right side, and some even on the chest. So when he was taking those stripes for our healing, he was actually shedding blood right by his heart, right. uh, from his own heart and from from his strength. And so uh, every part of his body was affected. And let's not fall into the trap of uh, starting to blame others oh, for his yeah. death. Let's blame ourselves. Right. My cousin shared with me one time. She said, you know what I think of when I think of of, of the teaching in the Bible that says to get the beam out of your own eye before you try to pick the speck out of your brothers. I said, I said what, you, what is She said, well, Amen. that beam is the cross of Calvary, the, cross, the beam that Jesus carried. And I realize every time I go to look at my brother or my sister's sin, I can't really even see it. Because all I can see is this beam that my sin put my Savior on the cross. Amen. That beam. Let's remember to look at that beam in our eye. That cro the cross of Calvary. He went. He came because he loved us, not to punish us. He came to save us, not to destroy us. And he came because we were already lost, and he wanted to find us and bring us home. I have a friend who has another friend who had a wife. All right. This wife was kidnapped right here in this area, and she was sold into human trafficking. This man, her husband, although their marriage was a little bit on the rocks, it reminded me, this reminded me of the church. The marriage is a little bit on the rocks, but still this man, he loved his wife, and he went to find her. All right. He had to go through a nightmare of things, because you would never believe the people that were involved in this ring of sex trafficking and wow. human trafficking. Once he finally rescued his wife, All right. shut down this ring that was kidnapping women and selling them into slavery, and brought her home, she promptly said, thank you, but no thank you. I have fallen in love with my captor. No. And she divorced him, and she married the captor and had a child with him. How many of us 
Say to Jesus, thank you, but no thank you. I don't want to be your bride. I don't want to be you, with you. I want to be married to myself. I want to be married to the thing that keeps me in bondage. All right now. How many of us do that? Hallelujah. But Jesus said, He came wow, Lord. to free us from the wages of sin, the true death. Hallelujah. He came to restore us back to our Heavenly Father. Amen. He came to take the title deed back from mankind to the earth. And he will do that on the day of judgment. Amen. He's the righteous judge, the only yes, one worthy to open the seals. Why? We could not have a human standing as a representative Amen. judging the things mankind has done wrong and then be guilty of the same thing himself and be able to stand and redeem the earth and to stand and redeem our soul. Only the Lamb of God. That's another message. If you're beginning to you look into the scripture and the prophecy and you see that, that you, he talks about the time when all the, the heavens were silent for a space. They were searching to find the one that was worthy to open the scroll. And only Jesus was found worthy to do that. And he came and he loved us so much. He showed us how to live. And then he said, No man takes my life. I lay it down. Amen. No man takes my life. I lay it down. So we can just get rid of all of that finger pointing and who it was that killed Jesus. Because he said, No one killed me. I lay it down for all of you all. He's the understanding of everything in life that he accidentally killed himself. He did it accidentally. He did it very intentionally because he loved you and because he loved me. And he knew that without his death, we could not live. Right. Because we could not be with his father and have the wages of sin, which is death, be upon us and be unpaid. Does that make sense? Amen. Mm -hmm. right. So he came and he died for us so we wouldn't have to so how much he loves us. But I want to wrap up with what love is. We talked about it last, the last time I was before you. Uh, we talked about the, what 1 Corinthians 13 says about love. Right. And I wrote down a couple of notes. But it says, it says, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. In other words, nothing I say matters. It's a bunch of nonsense if I don't have love. It doesn't say most of what you said or not much or not everything will be taken seriously. It says nothing. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I have become a noisy gong or a tiny symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, what are those last three words? I am. The verb to be. I become. I am nothing. I can have the faith to say, mountain, fall down. and watch it fall down. I can have the faith to say, tomorrow, but this is going to happen and have it come to pass every single time. But if I did all of that and I had not love, I would be nothing. Nothing. Amen. If I give away all that I own, and I hand over my body so I might boast but have not love, I gain nothing. Amen. Listen to that. Think about that. Wow. If I don't have love, my generosity 
gains me nothing. Not on earth and not in heaven. It gains me nothing. Even if I'm so generous as to be like Jesus and I think I'm going to give my life. But if I'm not doing it with the same motivation he did, which is because of love, I gain nothing. Not only does it mean nothing, no, 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 no am I nothing, I gain nothing. I don't gain the hope of becoming something better later. I gain Amen. nothing. Amen. Think about it. And then, let's see, what does it say love really is? It says, love is patient. Amen. Love is kind. It's not envious. It does not envy. It doesn't boast. It doesn't brag. Mm -hmm. And it's not all puffed up. It's not proud. Amen. I'm better than you. It's not like Mean Girls. Right I, don't, I, mean, I don't mean Mean Girls. I mean the movie, the silly movie, Mean Girls. <laughs> it does not behave inappropriately. It does not seek its own way. It is not provoked. You can't taunt it into doing something wrong. It doesn't keep account of wrongs. It does not rejoice over injustice, but rejoices in the truth. But the, the version I was reading a little bit earlier, it put it this way. It said, it said it always is patient. It's always kind. Always. That's, sometimes it's like that. No, always. Okay. It's always patient. Amen. We put that word always in front of everything. Always Amen. kind. Always does not boast. It is never rude. Amen. It is never boastful. It is never proud. It says it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Or easily angered. And it really keeps no account of wrong. How many of you heard this one? I can forgive you, but I can't forget. <laughs> Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. It's almost become a scripture in the church. <laughs> I can forgive you, but I'm not God. I don't have to forget. Yes, you do. You do have to forget. You must not hold the wrongs of others against Amen. them. You can't do it, Pastor Lord, can you? You cannot hold it against and it's hard. All right. Pastor Deb checked me on this one last week. You know, I was, I was talking about a situation. I was so frustrated about it. And she said, but Pastor Tim, you've got to <laughs> walk in the love you're preaching on. Like, yeah, you're right. Amen. It's not easy. We must walk in love. We must not. If I don't have to be a doormat. Yeah, you kind of do. All right, though. You kind of do. Why? Because Jesus is our defense. Yeah. Jesus is our refuge. Yeah. Jesus is our high tower. Yeah. Jesus is our resting place. Yeah. Jesus is our safety. Jesus is every. And it is not our life. We laid it down, remember, like he did. Amen. And now we rise again. We're baptized. We, it's a symbol that we lay our old man down and we rise up anew. And we're, we are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That means we have to be in him. We can't be hidden by Jesus when we're acting like self. Come on. Right. Forgive me? We can't be hidden by the nature of Christ and continue acting like stuff. We must yield to that Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we... i tell you why it's so important. This is it. This is the no other chance after this oh, life. You lay up your treasures in heaven by doing what is right. 
and by serving, but more importantly, you either push people away from God and eternal life yes. and into eternal damnation and, right. and possibly hellfire forever or death. I don't care whatever one you believe, it's still awful. Man. What's worse, to burn in fire for a billion years? Or if it's, no, it's just beginning and you're never getting out? Or just to, to go burn up and fire never exists. I've heard it talk both ways. I don't care which way it is. I don't know. Plan to go and find out firsthand. I'm going to be alive and clothed in Christ Jesus. I'm going to be wearing the wedding garments that are white as snow because they've been dipped in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I'm going to cling to the cross. And the one drop of blood that saved me. And I'm going to hear those words when I pass from this life to the next, whether it is by death or whether it's by uh, glorious transformation and his glorious appearing in the twinkling of an eye when we're caught up with him in the air. Whichever way it is, I'm going to hear the words enter in. Amen. My good and faithful servant. Amen. For great is your reward. Amen. And I will know when that composer wrote every great piece of music he wrote. I will know it and know and know solely Deo Gloria. To God alone belongs the glory. Amen. That I'm only saved because of what Jesus did for me. I'm only saved because God the Father loved me so much. I'm only saved because God the Holy Spirit drew me to him. And put me in a place of repentance. But what would be worse, Pastor Bernard used to say this, what's worse than going to hell? Sending your children and the people you love there. Amen. When we do not show love the way God intends us to show it, we don't draw them to Father God. We don't draw them to a loving relationship with Christ. We don't draw them to a place to where the Holy Spirit can do His job and finish them, draw them all the way into salvation. No. When we act ugly, put it easy. When we act ugly, all right, we push them away. Yes, yes. And the consequence of pushing the wrong person away in the wrong day could be them spending eternity in hell. Do you want that blood on your hands? My Lord Jesus. How much better is it to love? How much better is it to teach when the word says and let the Holy Spirit make the word come alive and rightly divide the word of truth and convict their heart of sin and cause them to have a true and genuine relationship with God where they're seeking him and not depending on a man or a woman to tell them how to live. Maybe they'll have pastors and teachers, but they're going to have a relationship with God. God Almighty himself and they will know when they hear the voice of God and nobody will be able to tell them right is wrong or wrong is right because God himself has told them how they are to live. Amen. That's the kind of relationship we need to have with God. Amen. Amen. And we need to love others. Amen. Love bears all things and believes all things and hopes all things and endures all things. I wasn't called to do that. Well, yes, you were. All right. You are called to do whatever God calls you to do. Whatever He puts before you, any opportunity you have to love another human being, that's what you're called to do. Whether you like it or not, you better love it. Amen. And whether you like them or not, you better love it. And through loving them, you may grow to like them. But by loving them with the love of God, you won't have an opinion about things that are personal, but you will leave that between them and God as the word can be rightly divided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I wrong, Pastor Larry? Praise the Lord.
We do need to teach the word. We need to teach the truth. We need to teach. There's a big difference in teaching and condemning. Amen. Mother Brown used to say, I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody into. But we need to remember that. We need to remember that. The judgment God judges his own. Amen. And then he judges the lost. Yes, he does. But you see, we're going to be judged harsher by our Father when we do what's wrong. Because we're not dead men walking. We're made alive by the Spirit of God. We're supposed to know how to behave. We're supposed to know what to do. Because the Spirit of God dwells within us. Amen. We are his tabernacle. We are his sanctuary. We are his dwelling place. Our bodies are his temples. Amen. The unsaved, those that have not come to know Christ yet, they are just walking dead men. They're not alive to the things of life. They're not alive to the things of love. Oh, yeah. So when we have been made alive and given the privilege of sonship, we should adore that so much and appreciate it so much that we... Do not get hateful with others, but we love them the way God loved us and we draw them. Amen. 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 Love never, say never, never. fails. Never. But where there are prophecies, they will pass away. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, when we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is partial will pass away. And I won't read the rest of the scripture of that, of that passage. Camp out there. Get your own Bible. Well, that's what I do. I read this passage in, in, in 1 Corinthians. Oh, my God. I think I'm about it until I really look at my life. Oh, no, man. Gee. I can really improve. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Thank God. My dad used to say, and it's a true teaching. The good thing about serving God is we get all the benefits of doing right just because we want to do right. <laughs> and we get none of the punishments of doing wrong because we didn't want to do wrong. We just messed up. What a great God we serve. He loved us so much. I'm going to read what it said in um, Romans. Where's that, brother? Romans 14, 8 through 10. Oh, there it is. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to whom? Lord. The Lord. For this reason, Messiah died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you... Why do you judge your brother? Or you too, why do you look down on your brother? For we all will stand before the judgment seat of God. Let me read that over. 
the stumble they can't see. Maybe it's a light. Let me start over. Verse chapter 13, verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt of to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. I don't have to convince you it's really the easier way. It seems so hard to love each other and love the unlovely and all of that. But it's the easier way. Because we can love our way into the kingdom or we can not love anyone. We can worry about the 613 commandments found in the law, not just 10, and how to properly fulfill those. Some of them don't even apply today because our culture has changed so much. Nobody would even know what it meant to have a square beard or, you know? We could like spend years debating how to properly observe the law and never get it right. Be putting only water in clay jars or feet that we're sitting if we don't. Becomes nonsense. Becomes manipulation of one another. And I find when people are focused on judging, everyone's judging each other and looking at you. People don't get more holy, Pastor Larry. They just get better at hiding their sin. And they get uglier about pointing out other people's because they don't want anyone to see theirs. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Minstrel rags, that is. Look it up. There's no life. That's what that's saying. Follow the illustration. Life is in the blood. Our righteousness is like filthy minstrel rags. Minstrel rags are dead blood. The body has discarded that is no good, does not bring life anymore. Right. And that's how our own righteousness is. So we can try as we may, and we'll have nothing but dead, filthy rags. All right, now. Or we can love. And in so perfecting our love, We'll perfect our behavior for one another right. and towards God. Man. I want to please my Heavenly Father. Man, I want to please Him. And if He tells me something is wrong, I don't care how much it's going to bother me. I ask Him for the strength to fix it. Right. And I keep trying. Maybe there are things in my life that I will try until the day I die when I finally get the victory. Because it says even until the day of salvation. But he is faithful to complete the work he started in me. He is faithful to complete the work he started in you. And he says even until the day of salvation, he's going to finish the work. So let's love. Let's love each other. Let's fulfill the law. Let's love when it's not easy to love. And realize it's far easier to love than it is to try to keep the law. The Apostle Paul warned several times not to get caught up in genealogies. 
Because they used to, to worry about who had, had the best teacher, which rabbi was scolding you the most, who was the best, you know. So, or who were their ancestors? They, I know all the way back to Moses, I know all the way back to me, from I know all of <laughs> Paul says, love. <laughs> and Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Amen. And these two things hang all the law and of the prophets. Amen. Right. Now let's stand together. Love, 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 love. Christian men, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself. God loves all. Simple song. Love, 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 love. love. Christian men, this is your call. Love your neighbor as yourself. God loves all. Adonai, I bless you and keep you. And I make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. Adonai, turn his face towards you and grant you his shalom. And then we sing our closing song again. It's about love, right? Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. And we are. Go with God today. Be blessed and walk in love. Amen. Amen.